All right. What's up, Chaz? I am here, ready to roll again. Oh, man, oh, man. Hey, everyone, welcome to Morning Coins with John and Chaz. I am John Spaulding from G1NBC Cuyahoga County, and I have Chaz with me from Hello, Genesee County, Michigan. Is that right? Yes, you got it right. How's the backyard today? How's the water? Uh, the water is uh, gone down somewhat. Um, we did have a little flood again out there in the in the marsh, but uh, the river is is uh, at normal levels today, okay. and uh, and it's greening up out there. It's looking very nice. Okay. All right, everyone. So we had to start over. So I'm going to make Charles read the disclaimer again, just because we're talking about cryptocurrency and and uh, blockchain technology and things like that. So. We wouldn't want anyone to mistake this for financial advice or investment advice. Just correct. Two yes, guys correct. having a chat on the future of uh, future of money, future of the internet, and future of pretty much whatever and everything. Okay, so uh, again, cryptocurrencies, future stocks, and options trading involves substantial risk of loss and are not suitable for every investor. The valuation of cryptocurrencies, future stocks, and options may fluctuate, and as a result, clients may lose more than their original investment. All investments discussed on this show are for informational purposes only and are not recommendations to buy or sell. You seemed very energetic when you were reading that. I was trying to get through it fast. <laughs> you did. You did good. All right, everyone, here's the links for today. Uh, if you're watching live, you can go ahead and follow along the slides because um, there's a link in the description. If you're watching the recorded version, you can still read them and look through them, uh, and we hope that you will. So today we're going to talk about Monero and yeah. centralized mining wars. Gunner24. Yep, yep. Uh, we're, we're going to look at some technical analysis tools, and uh, what I found is that at that website, you can get a trading manual for free, and it sort of explains it in detail. Oh, so, which one is that? Gunner 24. Gunner which 24. Which represents the GAN square is what we're going to be looking at. Okay, cool. And so, and beware of scams, right? Very important. Very important for delving and being in this space. Um Next shout out would be to G1NBC Live on on Facebook. Um, I was considering doing one of these, moving one of these episodes of All in the Family with Amy McCorkle on to D Live, and I still think I will do that. Um, but I think for May 10th, we're going to go ahead and stay with G1NBC Live on Facebook and shoot for the May 17th to do over here on on D Live on the Steam. Up. Uh, blockchain platform so uh with that may is mental health month and one of our content provider partners amy mccorkle and healing hands entertainment um are doing three screenings of her documentary uh called all in the family and it's an intimate look inside a family struggling with the genetic nature of bipolar disorder and so we do that with the intention of having a conversation with amy live uh showing you guys the documentary and it really brings uh, and, and talks about bipolar disorder from the perspective of family members who are um, next to, close with, or uh, related to uh, someone that has bipolar disorder. And kind of talks about um, what, it, what it's like from that perspective. Uh, so, and Amy will be there to talk about it and to talk about some of her other projects. And so I appreciate you Chaz for putting that slide in there and getting people to come on and, and and be a part of those broadcasts so you can see we're doing it every Thursday at 7 um, from now until the end of the month and we're gonna help kick uh, mental illness stigma to the curb yes uh, and having uh, experience with that in my own family I uh, I can highly relate to that so I will uh, I'll be there Awesome. I appreciate that. And that is on Facebook again, June NBC Live, 7 Eastern. And then we'll look at the 17th to do uh, on D Live so that you all can see that as well. Um, all right. So let's get into our word of the day 
Fungus. Or, flexible fungus. Fungible. Flexible fungus. Fungible. And uh, it a readily changeable to adapt to new situations. Okay. So, I, you know, it's a flexible thing where in, in the, the chain can sort of respond to changes and uh, able to be replaced or replaced by another identical item, which is when we, when we get a little bit farther along, I, I had a, one of the concepts I was trying to get out of uh, Monero, uh, trying to understand was the actual, how they can make a, uh, a transfer of money, um, how they can make it non-traceable and i think i finally grasped that and fungible is plays right into that okay cool so let's go ahead and get right into it the milken global conference yeah. uh oh this is where you're talking about noriel yeah Ruby. calling him out calling him out you, you had some experience we talked and you had experience with this type of uh response to the blockchain oh yeah and the, this guy of course he is uh he predicted the 2008 financial uh disaster which you know i think every time somebody makes a prediction about something and it comes true they think they're experts at everything mm -hmm. i mean yeah this guy's got some big credentials but his background really is based in centralized banking he worked, he's worked for a lot of centralized uh, banks, the Fed. He's worked for the IMF. I mean, he, he's a guy that his career has been uh, rooted in centralization. And so I see this, and he says, all this talk about decentralization is just bullshit. Well, that's the kind of response you get from somebody that's got nothing. Gotcha. He doesn't understand it. Yeah. And literally, his comment almost... There was almost a riot that broke out because of it. It got really contentious. Interesting. Uh, yeah, there. And so I, I just added that that comment at the bottom there. It says Rubini announced on Twitter in early 2014 of his new practice of transcendental meditation. Uh, maybe he's getting messages from other dimensions. I don't know. But... <laughs> well, and you know what? It, it wouldn't it be safe to say that an economics professor at New York University probably isn't going to like the idea or thought of a decentralized like not game based economy but decentralized uh, cryptocurrency based economy well yeah well he's a Keynesian economist right mm -hmm. so he believes in trickle down trickle down economics which you know we know don't work um, but he he's a uh, I think he's so steeped in his own, the, the old world that, you know, it's like moving, we've moved the steering wheel from the front of the car to the back seat and he just doesn't get it. Right. Well, one of the, you know, there's a couple, there's a couple things that I have a lot of concerns with though. One is, um, you know, that, that this community is an ecosystem, right? Like, and when I say this community, I mean, people that are interested in blockchain, uh, and cryptocurrency or crypto tokens um, and then steam in and of itself and and steam inc and the steam at blockchain and d live and d live 24 hour or they're all kind of communities of communities we're building a network um, that's why right. i like broadcasting on d live i want to be a part of the network i think steam is a good use case for um for for digital currency, but it's also a good use case for building a sharing economy and and, ha and using that and, and defining that proof of brain type stuff. Um, finding people out there that are curating and finding and delivering good content. Um, and also pro providing an example on how a blockchain can function. It's a, it's a great use case. And so, but what a couple of my concerns are is that there's a lot of uh everyone wants their chain to be the one right right yeah. and, but but if you look across the spectrum there's thousands of them there's thousands of tokens thousands of um not thousands right but there's a lot there's hundreds upon hundreds and mm -hmm. some of them are good some of them are bad some of them are for a storage space some of them are for proof of brain some of them like monero are for just um, anonymity and things like that. So it, it is an ecosystem and we all have to figure it out. Right. We're all, you know, 
Go ahead. You look at your wallet, and do you have? A lot of people have more than one bank. They mm -hmm. they diversified themselves across financial institutions. Some people have banks, and they have brokerage firms. Well, the blockchain is sort of like that. You know, you have a, a blockchain for different uses. And we've discussed a lot of those coins on this show. And, uh, you know, we have we saw one that does loans, another one that involves dentistry, you know, Denticoin. Uh, there's just a lot in uh, Syndicator who has, you know, a purpose for predicting the market. Right. Golem, who has building a supercomputer with, with laptops and other types of desktop computers. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of case uses that are, are specialized and they have different uses. So there is a place for different blockchains. Yep, yep. And, the, and I think there's a place, right. And each of those chains will, is a network and a community in and of itself. Yeah. And so the only way to survive really is in this space is to understand and be a part of the ones that you want, the ones that you choose or the ones that, that uh, you feel confident in. So, right. And I have, uh, I have different uh, websites that I, I prefer over others or different services. And yeah, so, I know like Bing. Well, now that you brought that <laughs> Yes, and, and because of uh, you, you are ripping on me for Bing, I'm going to use it more often. Well, good. Yeah, I mean, you won't find anything on there. <laughs> I don't find it on Google either. <laughs> How Google dare stuff. you? I got uh, half my page is advertisements when I pull up a Google search. So Yeah. I do use it, but only as a second result. Gotcha. You know, but yeah, I'm not happy with either one of them, but, you know, what do you do? No, I know. I'm with you. So you th then you made this a very offensive graphic uh, for <laughs> for Nouriel to kind of like close out the discussion where looks like the little mouse is giving the bird to the blockchain. That's Nouriel, and yeah. uh, it doesn't look like he, it doesn't look like the character Nouriel in this graphic is long for the world. Why why would you um why would you do that? Are you insinuating that uh? The blockchain's going to swallow up New York University, and he's not going to be able to reti uh, <laughs> retire with full pen well, or full whatever. My, here's my comment. Denial is not a river in Egypt. Take that, Nouriel. Yeah. Chez is coming after you. All right. Now we're looking at the CCI 30 crypto index. I thought, you know, we should bring this part into our show just like a, you know, do our weekly look at the market because isn't that what they do on the stock market? Hey, what did the market do this, you know, time? Yeah. So uh, I uh, just put this up there and uh, just for when I did this, I think it was uh, Saturday when I did this, uh, the market month to date was up about five, you know, close to 5%, 4.7. The 52 week, uh, gain was seven percent and the year to date is uh negative 30. so you know gotcha. we did have okay. that, that, that downturn in the market and uh, i thought you know i've been trying to follow this pretty closely and it's interesting to see the market moves that it seems like they're all like a like a, a herd or a flock yeah Market's up, everybody's up. The market's down, everybody's down. I, I don't see anybody out there doing any coins that I watch doing anything different than the market does as far as direction. Interesting. I just don't see anybody saying, okay, these coins are down, but we're up. I just don't see it. It seems like there's this push in one direction for everybody and then a push in another direction for everybody. Yeah. I did see there was an increase in, in <clears throat> Bitcoin cash higher than the top three uh, ripple bitcoin and ethereum um a couple days ago like i'd say about a week ago and they sustained it actually it, it went up a little bit higher like and when stuff like that happens i don't know right i know that that there's contention between the bitcoin community and bitcoin cash um but when things like that happen like a sustained growth more so than others that's interesting yeah, so. yeah, it's very unusual for that to happen. There might be yeah. a news item or something that drives it. 
But I'm just interested in why this herd mentality on all, most of the coins I'm looking at, you know, why, why doesn't somebody get out there on their own and take off? It's just not happening. That's a good question. I think there. I think that if we pose that question or take a clip of this show and, and send that out to folks, I, I wonder what kind of response we'll get from the different communities. Because I'm sure that I'm sure there are reasons that uh, you know. And, well, yeah. What 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 drives the market? Well, it's people that drive the market. So I think. I don't think people are seeing the value in certain coins over other coins. This is just my opinion, you know, that I think what they see is the cryptocurrency market and they're just not paying attention to the use cases, the things that we're covering in the show. Right. And I also think right now with with the it also depends on the development of the blockchain um, platform. If they don't have like Steam it and D Live, like they're doing updates and they're constantly changes and, and people can interact and meet each other and da 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 da. But if they're if it's something like Monero or EOS or other ones that are like still in development and the platform like they don't have working platforms, then I'm sure that makes it challenging. Um and I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why there isn't a breakout, but I also, sometimes there isn't a breakout because there aren't enough new, there isn't enough new money coming in or new people coming in. And I think one thing that is driving it is the lack of, like, we have a lack of technological fluency in the United States, right? There's a lot of people that don't, that think Facebook is the internet. Yeah. Like that's where they go to find stuff. And if it's not there, then it doesn't exist. And yeah, so, it, and also like the lack of bandwidth, like people don't have internet in a lot of areas still. Right. I, I'm not sure what our, our uh, saturation is on, on internet connections, but I, I believe that people are more, oriented towards the internet for social interactions with other people rather than the technology itself. Mm -hmm. they, they want to talk to, to Betty or they want to talk to Joe. Right. You know, and just the thought of like them check, going in, bu like buying a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin the next day, it's 110 the day after it's 56 that, you know, five days after that it's, it's 99. Right. Yeah. There's a, there's a lack of understanding of how markets work. Mm hmm and uh, hopefully we can help that, you know, with our show. And we're, we introduce people to different ways to look at trading or buying. Yeah, and absolutely. Hopefully it's educational. But, you know, some people will be totally bored with this show. I mean, let's face it. Oh, they, sure. They don't lie in, in that. I'm an eclectic. I like to pull from all different areas and learn things. But some people have a very narrow focus in their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good point. So it's still it's still an uphill battle. But uh, but speaking of um, kind of like what you said earlier about about coins and, and everyone having their use cases, uh, the Monero folks have a, a very interesting use case, and they have a very um, they have a very uh, ingrained community. They have a real good yeah. community behind it. Let's talk yeah, a little bit about. Well, Monero. they're open. It's an open source program, which I like because, you know, when you're open source, everybody can look at it and see what's going on. You know, if it's a closed source, then you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. But they, you know, Monero allows, uh, it's a proof of work system. Um, and we'll talk a little bit. There was a, uh, a group out there that were mining Bitmain uh, and they were, they were trying to, they're focusing on, on monopolizing the mining for Monero. Uh, Monero's response to that, and I think this is that they forked it in order to stop that. They changed, basically changed protocols so that they could not dominate, that Bitmain could not dominate, because they have done it in other, uh, other uh, blockchains that, that Bitmain has gone and dominated that, and that would defeat the decentralization purpose. Gotcha. Gain control and control blocks. And so I think that was a very wise and very good move on Monero's point. Okay. 
he keeps them va- valid. He keeps them, you know, trustable when they do things like right, that. Right, right. And that, that, that kind of trust is key when you're talking about blockchain communities. If right. you, you fail that and you take that away from people that are involved in your project or, or in your company and you break that trust, then you, you won't you won't be able to survive because this stuff is, like you said, it's too open source. Yeah. People can see it, right? It's a it's an immutable public ledger for some things. And if right. you violate it, you're done for. Yeah, and I, I made some notes here. And, and for our, our uh, more uh, tech-oriented people, um, one of the notes I wrote down was that Bitmain has uh, been accused of implementing some tech called Ant Bleed, which gives it the power to cut off miners at will. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so there's always going to be, I think, this battle to uh, prevent people from dominating or controlling the blockchain. And and Monero's, they stepped up to the plate, and, and you know, they're doing the war. Yeah, they are. They're doing pretty good, too, as a coin. Yeah. So, and I thought it was interesting that there, and one of the uh, lines on the chart, that, or on the slide, was mining network you can use cpo or gpo variations in operating systems so you don't need the super uh expensive uh video card to uh to actually do mining you can do it with a G, uh, just a cpu okay okay that i didn't know yeah i was i just ran across that reading some of their stuff i thought that was really cool because that allows more people to participate yeah yep Good point. Uh, the history of the, the transactions or the addresses are visible to the blockchain. I thought that was, I, I would, I'm not a programmer, but someone who would understand how that's done. Um, I know there are some elements uh, in, the, in the protocols that one of them, and we talked a little bit about the fungible thing. Mm-hmm. When, when someone sends someone else a, Monero coin or token, that sending person's uh, coin is destroyed in the process. And then a new coin or group of coins is recreated. And I think that's how they use part of the the security is that you can't trace the the sender's coins because they've been destroyed. And somehow the system or the protocol knows that and recreates those coins to the receiver. Wow. So it's sort of like Star Trek, right? Yeah. Beam me up, Scotty. Boom, yeah, yeah, yeah. And reassembled somewhere else. That's neat. Yeah, I would, uh, we're, there's a um, there's a Crypto Cleveland group that meets up, and a couple of people are are very interested in this as a, as their coin of choice. Okay. So, so this is neat. This is cool. I like it. I, I didn't know much about it. Other, the only thing I knew was the identity factor and that that's what right. they were going for. And I like that. What did they say or what information did you find? Because you know it's going to be a common um, question around like money laundering and, and things like that type stuff. Well, that, that was one of Monero's points in some of their, their uh, information was that eventually – as the uh, regulation by governments and uh, different uh, uh, institutions start to take hold, people are going to flock the Monero because they can hide your transactions and they can't be seen. I that that I don't know how that's going to pan out in the long haul because someone may yeah, you know, and it's an open source too, so it's not like. They yeah. can go somewhere and put somebody in jail. You know what I mean? Is they're if they're operating outside of that community. So my, the next thing is what you asked was what about using it for illegal purposes or uh, purposes that are not so good? I I'm not sure how that would pan out. Okay. How that could be controlled. Gotcha. And uh, if you guys are watching live on D Live, we love you. And you can see the number above, join up. It'll mess up the video configuration a little bit uh, if you join live via uh, 
video, but that is okay. We'll love to have you in here. And if you and if you have any reactions to what you're hearing, just kind of uh, throw it in the chat room if you don't want to come in. Um, but you can also go to zoom.us and type in that meeting ID number that you see above us and uh, come say hey. All right, so next up, actually, we have the shut up and sit down slide. Old man versus the world. I'm working on this show, and uh, once I get the uh, production uh, down to a systematic fashion so I don't have to do everything manually, uh, we'll be bringing this out. And we're just going to talk about current events and past events and how people think and how they come to certain conclusions. Cool. So that is Old Man versus the World. That's Chaz's show in production. Where are you going to broadcast it? You're going to go live on D Live, or you're going to go somewhere else? I think the first couple of shows are not going to go live. I want to get it down first, okay. and then, then once we do that, now you know, as you pointed out to me, I, I'm learning UBS, so uh, I'm I'm not good enough to even be called the novice yet. So oh. I'll get, it. and then once we do, we'll go live. OBS. Yeah, OBS. What did I say? OSB. You you said UBS. UBS. That's a bank. Too bad they're not a sponsor of the show. Yeah. All right. Back to Monero. We have the developer community. Yeah. Um, Black Duck. Uh, it's the hub where the Monero people hang out. And so if you want to go there and look and see who's working on this and how many contributions they made, uh, you can do that. Okay. So there is an existing community out there that uh, of people. There's no... Uh, centralized. I think they said there's like 30 core developers, but a total of over 200 working on it. Gotcha. There, and there's Fluffy Pony. I was just talking about Fluffy Pony with Gone Rogue uh, on the steaming pile that we did on Sunday. And he was talking about him too with another coin. So I know that dude is all around the crypto community doing stuff. So it's a real person. A real person named Fluffy Pony, but I, yeah, I, 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 he has a real name too, so I'll have to go and check that out and smash it up if Gone Rogue is here, or if anyone else knows who Fluffy Pony is and what other coins he's involved in, pop it in the chat and yeah, let us know. let us know. This is important that we are we're following the, the creation and maintenance of these blockchains. All right. Am I moving on? Yes. Next slide, please, sir. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, I'll let you do this one. This is where you all can click on and support either myself or Chaz. You can also do it on the new revamp D Live with a gift, contribution, a heart, or an upvote. Uh, but no, uh, for, for people who are new to to crypto or if you're watching the recorded version on youtube and you haven't not yet bought any uh, digital tokens for yourself you can start a coinbase account use one of those links in the slideshow um and and if you invest a hundred dollars then either Chaz or myself depending on the link that you choose will get ten dollars and you will also get an extra ten dollars worth of uh bitcoin so go ahead and click those links and they will be in the description on YouTube. They are not in the description on D Live because you guys already know what you're doing, and you probably don't like Coinbase anyway. And to add to that, uh, <laughs> to that we we are also accepting uh, ad slides. If you want to advertise your business or uh, or something that you're doing, we will accept ads and for a nominal fee. Yeah. Or a couple Steam tokens. Just hit us up yeah, in the comments and, you know, let's talk. If you have a, if you have a Steam It show, if you have a DLive or DLive 24-hour show, you want to come on, kind of like how they do um, Whale Pool and all sorts of other shares for sending SBD. Let's, uh, let's just chat about it and it's... You guys know the Steam It platform. It's once you send it, you can see it. So we can figure it out and we we'll will work, work through it with you. Out. All right. No more shameless self promotion. Not we have for a, a forecasting from William D. Gann. <laughs> Not for a little bit. 
I, I think the, the next uh, slide, or when we look at this, uh, there is a uh, indicator or a, a system that we're going to be looking at. Originally was uh, created by William D. Gann. And here's a comment that, that I think is very profound. It says, time is the most important factor in determining market movements. And by studying the past records of averages or, indiv or individual stocks, you will be able to prove for yourself that history does repeat and that by knowing the past, you can tell the future. There is a def definite relation between time and price. Now, by a study of time periods and time cycles, you will learn why tops and bottoms are found at certain times and why resistance levels are so strong at certain times and bottoms and tops hold around them. The most money is made when fast moves and extreme fluctuations occur at the end of major cycles. That I, I read this and I, I do use his uh, system. Uh, okay. I found, I found it interesting that what he basically is saying here is that math drives us. It's not something that we do to things. It's something that does things to us. It's, a, it's an effect on us and that for some reason these historical cycles just repeat themselves. Interesting. And yeah, I, I did. I, I thought that was uh, pretty cool. And he says there's nothing new under the sun, you know, that everything just repeats itself. Mm -hmm. but the, the next slide sort of shows, it shows a, a GAN, what they call a GAN square. Okay. And it, it entails a lot of different things. Okay, so let's, I'm going to go ahead and blow this slide up. And then it, describe it as to the best of your ability, and I'll kind of show those areas that you're talking about with the mouse. Okay, so in the beginning, look at that first coin there, John, that's inside the box, right on the edge of the box, the, 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 the candle that's really tall. Mm -hmm. The green one? Yeah. Yep. He, he was a, a believer in the Fibonacci sequences. Okay. And what he says is that when a stock makes a turn, which he calls an impulse, uh, that's when you start measuring the path of the stock or coin or whatever investment you're using. So okay. in this case, I believe I used 11 candles on this one because that's in the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, and, is and that that's 11 from the beginning? From the edge of that square, yeah. So gotcha. what you do is you find the turn. So up at the top there, there's that mountain and it turns down. You find that turn and then you count backwards uh, a Fibonacci number. It can be one, two, three, five, seven. You know, you just have to find the one that fits the best. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And then that hit that first, that was where you picked the first arc. The three angled lines coming out of there are what they call GAN lines. And the top line, when the stock follows that line, that means it goes up two frames or two time periods. It goes up as opposed to one move forward. So it should move up twice as much as it moves forward. This is where the time and price uh, thing comes in. The, that second line that cuts them in half, that look part of that pie uh, design. The dotted there. line? Uh, no, we're looking right right where that candle, that red candle ends. Uh -huh. That's the one one. One move forward is one move up. And then the third line down is two moves forward, one move up. So he, he, he knows that, the, that during certain time and price frames that these will follow those lines. And I'm expecting that Monero will follow that middle line and begin to climb again. And you're talking about the three lines that are coming out of... Right, the, the array or the pie-shaped right, okay. areas. Gotcha. Yeah. And you're suggesting that, that Monero is going to go somewhere up here in this middle line. Right, it's going to start following that. Okay. And and your target uh, for that would be the first set of double arcs. 
Okay. So right. Okay. So the f there's the first arc, and then the second arc. That's considered inside the double arcs. Yes. Okay. Right. So those are areas of uh, resistance. And I mean, this is a complex thing, and I think that's why I put the uh, the Gunner Twenty Four uh, link in there because he actually goes into detail explaining this. So okay, good. So there's a Gunner Twenty Four. Yeah, right. In the beginning of the slides, just go back to that Gunner Twenty Four link, and, right. and there's a trading manual there that you can download for nothing. Perfect. And it will go into details. But what this is, in, just in general, when you look at this, this system. Uh, entails everything that he researched in the market. And some people are that use this claim that we're, there's a 70% success rate if you follow this system. Okay. And of course I got the old, the old time, uh, the, the stop and reverse, the you know, parabolic SAR, which is that step line right next to the candles. And mm -hmm. at the bottom, on balance volume. So I, I use multiple multiple indicators, and I think it's wise to do that. All right, cool. Good job. Thanks for going through that. And I've seen that I've seen that chart, you know, in a couple different shows and episodes and things like that. Um, so it's good to have an explanation of it. It's it's uh. It's some, it took me quite a while to get used to that that chart because that charting system because it, it is it's pretty precise but there are there's room for variation so you know I said follow it follows the uh, Fibonacci sequence mm -hmm. when counting the candles but it could be off by one so you might have to use a non Fibonacci number it's the best fit. That, that you want to use. Interesting. Right, right. I do like that it builds on the Fibonacci numbers, right? So it just adds another kind of element to that, th those scales as well. Right. There's several elements in here. And, and it's harder to see, but there is a box. There's like nine boxes or so that, that are. So, like, going back to the, our discussion, though, since it's all kind of blockchain or, or Bitcoin dependent, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, being the top two, what's it look? What do you think about the future for Monero? Is it, I mean, would it, could it ever break out if it were to gain in popularity? I think so. Um, when? I, I couldn't predict that, but I really like the idea that uh, your transactions can be invisible. And uh, I think mo as people become more aware of how the blockchains work and some of the pitfalls and regulation, I think they are correct in that people will migrate towards Monero. Gotcha. Yeah, because of that. Right. Okay. You know what we didn't do? What? We didn't do the what's what is Monero video. Oh, can we do it now? We can. We can do it now. I don't know if the viewers want to watch it for all of five minutes, but let's intro it and ha have them know where to go see it and we'll put yeah. the link to the full one in there um but for those of you who are watching thank you we appreciate you being here and here's a little bit on monero monero is a secure private untraceable currency monero seeks to be electronic private cash it is open source decentralized and freely accessible to all in this video we will explain the basics of how monero works but first, here's why people who already know about it like it so much. Monero transactions are always private. With Monero, others can't tell where you've received Monero from, where you've sent it to, or the amount involved. Not only does Monero's inherent untraceability help preserve your privacy, it also provides peace of mind since you don't need to worry about how your Monero was used prior to it coming into your possession. Monero's privacy and fungibility make it true electronic cash. Monero uses a blockchain to securely record transactions. A blockchain is a digital ledger of transactions to which entries can only be added. In a blockchain, transactions are grouped into blocks which are linked together to compose a chain. A copy of the blockchain is simultaneously maintained by the majority of Monero network members. 
The blockchain secures transactions without the need for a central authority. But how does it achieve this? A block is a collection of payments submitted around the same time. Members of the Monero network called miners record payments into blocks. For a new block to be accepted by the network, it must follow a set of rules and come with a solution to a challenge. To All right, guys, so that was a little bit of the Monero starter pack. It's available on YouTube, and if you liked what you heard about Monero, you can go ahead and check them out. Um, thanks for being here, you guys. I know I've said that a couple times. I uh, appreciate the DLive 24-hour community uh, for helping promote the show and yeah. to DLive for helping uh, facilitate a cool community of live streaming and and uh, content creations such as ours. Yes, we really appreciate that. And it's a great service and benefit to a lot of people. And um, for those of you still watching, you can check out uh, our website, g1nbc.com, where you can find my affiliate website and some of my content provider websites. Uh, just a reminder that this Thursday we're going to be doing on G1NBC Live, we'll be doing um, the All in the Family show at 7 p.m. Eastern. And any shout-out you want to give? Yeah, just visit uh, the, the Flint site, G1NBC Flint, and uh, you can just do a, a Google search and uh, find that. And uh, we have Thanks. some content on there, you know, that you can look at. Uh, we're trying to get diversification as much as possible and uh, inclusiveness. So pay us a visit. Cool. Thanks, Chaz. And thanks for, for putting the slides together. Uh, whether you are watching live or watching the recording, go ahead and check out the slides. Uh, leave uh, some comments if you'd like or leave a comment below um, in this uh, recording. And we will see you guys next week. I think we're going to do next week. We're going to do Wednesday. Yes. It's going to be afternoon coins, but we're still going to keep the name the same. Yes. So. We're not changing our name. We're not making us do that. Right. But we will be back here on the DLive servers on my account until Charles gets his set up and ready to go. And then we'll do a DLive over on yours. Yes. We'll do it here. That uh, way, we'll, if anyone we'll, upvotes you, then you can have... Right. The I can have the problems. <laughs> well, we want to demonstrate your proof of brain. Okay. Well, that could be tough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. This is Morning Coins with John and Chaz. We appreciate you tuning in, and we will see you live next week. Thank you all. Please Bye, all. come back again.